our happy hour has been changed for the time being. We are not inside of a bar. We are not a bartender and a client. We are now two urban explorers who are uh, trying to find a ghost or try to lift the curse of this very, very frightening and scary place. We are inside of a game obscure uh, 19th found footage themed a horror RPG made by your one and only Tommy Sunsenauer. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, we are going to talk a lot about Obscure, a lot about uh, Tommy's work, and we are gonna find some answers uh, and solve some mysteries, such as what the hell is even Obscure. But be before that, Tommy, would you like to introduce yourself? Who are you? What are you doing? And uh, what uh, are the current works of anything you are doing and can share with us? Yes, um, as you said, my name is Tommy. Um, I run my own little company called Stuntsonaut. But what I do in my free time, it's actually pretty combined with what I do for work because I'm lucky enough to live off what I'm doing, making these weird role-playing games. First game that I published uh, was the dump game for Mugball. Um, then I made Warden, one bit, one bit deeper. I was the co-creator of uh, Goblin Gun Store, and then I made up your which this interview is going to be about today. Um, oh yeah, and then I'm working on uh, getting Mark filled, the Mark Ball uh, Death Metal hack I'm doing. I'm working very hard on getting that done as well. So I have quite some balls in the air. Uh, I've always wondered how do you pronounce uh, Mark Dude? It's, it, it's, it means dark death in, uh, in both Swedish and in Danish. Um, our languages are, are very similar. Can you tell me what is obscure? What is the history behind, uh, behind this game and why? Because uh, to be fair, I've never seen specifically found footage horror inside of RPG. You know, um, and, and neither have I. I um, I was doing some research on it to find out if, if, if this was a thing already, because quite often when when you got an idea, you look it up on the internet and you see the old shit that's already exists. But with Obscure, I, I couldn't find anything that that had taken the found footage genre into the role-playing game. Um, but for me, it was quite obvious to do so, as the, as the found footage movies put you in in the point of view of the of the, the main characters and that's exactly what you do when playing a role-playing game so for me it, it, it was the obvious choice to to make this game and and of course it because i i love these kind of movies and games um i'm a big fan of the Blair Witch project and that's one of the biggest inspirations i think for for this game obscure um together with the the video game uh, outlet where you're you play as, as as a character who doesn't have any weapons or anything, and your only source of light is your video camera with the night vision on. So that, that was a big part of the inspiration for, for making this game. Can you tell me what is magnetic about about them? I would think it's because they are the kinds of horror movies that succeed in, uh, in scaring me the most, because what you see looks like it, it could be real. That's the whole point of the bound push genre, right? I have always loved horror movies, and just this top genre is the one that I find uh, most effective. And I wanted to make a game that's as scary as possible, so of course I chose the genre that I find most scary. When I started to uh, to create these artworks for uh, for Obscure, and then when I was doing the writing and stuff, each night I when my when my baby was put to sleep, I put on a found footage movie and stand alone in the dark and watch it and picked out the, the things that I found terrifying or scary and, and used that in the game. So, so that's what my, that was my research for it. Um, As I read it, of course, and, uh, and, and, and I'm planning to, to run it sometime, I found out that you're using the mechanics of tunnel goons, of course, modified for, uh, for this setting. Uh, why did you choose uh, this particular mechanics and why are you referring this game as a narrative 
Uh, what's the story behind this uh, choice? When I started writing the game, um, I didn't know if I should create my own system or what system I wanted to use for it. I just knew that I wanted something that were pretty straightforward. So I, I, I didn't want any uh, crunchy rule set to to get in get in the way of the of the storytelling, because I before I have run uh, you know like D and D games, um, always making them horror themed because that's kind of my thing, and and. I found out that all it, it's almost impossible to run something that is really scary when using a system like like fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, um, because for me all these goddamn rules came in the way all the time. So my players were looking rules up and you can't do this and you have to do it like that. So for me that that really got in the way of the of, of telling this scary story, um, and that's what I want Obscure to be like like telling a scary story with your friends. So I came across this um, this rule set for tunnel goons. I never played it myself or anything. I just found this whole concept of using your the energy that you spend. That's the same thing as your health in the game. So you have to sacrifice some of your health to succeed in in, in doing some uh, demanding tasks. And I found that this was perfect for Obscure because it 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 makes the players like weigh their decisions. Is this really worth doing this for? Um, because I know my energy will be drained, and how long am I going to survive if I do this? So, so that that kind of attention was was something that I found really effective from the Tower Goons rule set. Then I, of course, it started out as just the same as Tower Goons, but then I added more because it had to fit the story and the theme of the game. And I I stole something from the Alien RPG as well. You know this stress mechanic. I call it anxiety points in in Obscure. So it, it's kind of like I, I took different pieces from different games and put them together. But the core mechanic are these these six dice pool systems from Gum Tunnel Goons. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Anxiety Man. Yeah, he's a nice fella. He he's charming. His his smile is is um very charming. Who are the players? Who are people that we are playing? That we are role playing as and. Uh, why are they even get themselves into such scary situations like abandoned asylum with with uh, ghosts or um, alien contact or or wars uh, some, something? Yeah, um, the the player characters. Uh, that's a very Im important uh, part of Obscure is that they are they are not heroes at all. They are just regular everyday people. Why they are caught up in these situations? That's uh, actually part of uh, creating your characters and starting your uh, your game, because each scenario that's at least for the ones that I put in in the book, there are four scenarios in that book. It has this uh, this section in the beginning called "Why are you here?" and this is something that is meant to read to your players before you start the whole character creation process, to like to spark the imagination and and for them to come up with with ideas of. Why the hell would they be in this, like you said, haunted asylum? And uh, usually it's some kind of a, a very classic trope from the found footage genre. It's like some people went missing. What the hell happened to them? Um, and then I, I put in some suggestions as well in the book. Like you could be a, a, like a film college student trying to make some important uh, movie. Or you could be maybe one character as private investigator. But mostly they're just maybe someone who is aiming for their 15 minutes of fame. You know, I, I have I have a, a bunch of archetypes uh, in the book, but but the bottom of it is that you are regular people. Yeah, there is no non paranormal um, activity inside of players. There is no such thing as magic available for uh, or, or or any mm, source of uh, abnormal uh, abilities. Um, besides one, but that's, uh, that's only happens when you die. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. I, I, I made this, this death mechanic because that was, that was also one of the things that I knew when I started to, to make the games that, that I wanted it to be fun for the players who die because that's a, that's a pretty big change of dying in obscure, um, your energy, your energy points are sparse and you will get caught up in some fucked up situations. So 
And if a player dies, I didn't want this whole mess with someone rolling up a new character in the middle of it, um, it for the GM to, you know, like, you, you, you're in the basement of an asylum, then suddenly, hey, I'm here. That, that's, that that would be really challenging for, for a game master to to include a new character all of a sudden, right? So so I, I had to figure out a way to to include the players even though their characters were dead. Yeah, th there can only be a finite amount of wardrobes that other uh, people uh, hide before before you came around. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and as a ghost, uh, you can be a malevolent or benevolent being. Uh, and uh, this very uh, much reminds me of um, Bluebird's Bride uh, death mechanic. Um, when uh, when there is a, a part of a bride, each each player is a, a part of uh, the bride's psyche, and uh, they can shatter, they can be destroyed, and and when they do, they are still in the game as a players, but they they get different to tell the story with with other players. Who is the game master? Who is the game master, and where uh, those um, let's just call it responsibilities of a game master end, and the responsibility of a player uh, starts, or is it blurred vision? Uh, it it's actually it, it is quite a, a classic approach to it with the game master and the, and the players, but I I think a few times in the book I also I also emphasize that. It should be a, a giant storytelling experience, and um, that's why I also suggest that when uh, when the characters find uh, come upon some found footage, some old tape or something, that instead of the game master just reads this up, they will hand it over to the players and let them tell what their character sees or experiences and stuff like that. So so we we do have a game master that controls the game. But but their job is is not just to kill off the players. So the job of both players and the game master is to to create the tension and create the scary situations. I don't know if that answered your, <laughs> your question. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. I think I think it really does. Uh, I really like yeah. the um, the dynamic that observer, because yeah, the, then the game master is called observer, which is genius. I really like um, changing the name game master to, to other uh, to other titles uh, and observer uh, for the uh, some kind of a master behind the all, all behind all the cameras. Exactly. Uh, like the, the the one in the shadows. Someone who who is watching them, but not necessarily interferes too much, right? That, that's yes. kind of in the name the observer uh, as well, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very very clever on multiple layers. But when he does, when he does controls the situation, uh, who uh, or what does they control? Who or what are the NPCs? Yeah, the, actually, I I found when 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 I have uh, ran some of my own scenarios for for my friends, that that most of of my job as the game master or as the observer is to describe things in an unsettling ways, you know. Tell them, tell them uh, what what all these things that thematically creates uh, some kind of tension. There, there will be some NPCs in the game as well, but but it's actually really sparse. There will, of course, there will be some enemies, but there doesn't even have to be that many in a in a scenario. I think in the scenarios that I put in the book are made for one shots. Actually, the whole system is mostly made for one shots. If you if you create if you if you create your own scenario, it's it can easily be enough to to make like two types of enemies in, in, in a one-shot scenario. And then you have to create this main villain or this entity or this murderer or some, some main bad guy, you know. So the, the game master's role in this is, is mostly just to, to describe the things that the, that the characters will, will experience and see. Create the, the tension, make it scary for your players. Okay, so uh, what are the entities that you can uh, meet? Uh, in in obscure, I mean, of course, without spoiling your scenarios. But uh, imagine that we are the players who is uh, thinking about buying this game or um, or playing the, uh, this game. What can he expect? Let's list some uh, stereotypical enemies or or beings that we can uh, we can meet in obscure. For maybe for someone who is not familiar with found footage. A, a lot of it is based on you know. Um curses, uh, cursed places 
where the spirits of the people who died here still haunts it. So there will be ghosts, of course, but you will also meet I, in one of the scenarios, I, I tried to make the four scenarios in the book as uh, as different as, as I could to show different aspects of what the system can do. Um, so you will come across um, the classic ghosts, you will come across a witch in the woods, uh, that's a scenario dealing with, uh, with aliens. I also have a few things in the making so that did not make it in the first book, but well, uh, I think we're going to talk about that later in the new project here, but um, you you can use it for all kinds of, of entities. But what what I'm what I tried to do was take it a bit away from the you know Call of Cthulhu like uh, where you're up against these huge elder gods and giant creatures and stuff to make it more um, kind of more mundane in a way you know make it smaller scale it all down. So so the thing you're up against is the is the reanimated corpse of a killer or. Uh, a witch that died hundred years ago in this in these woods, stuff like that. Clearly, this uh, game is uh, perfect for um, scenarios that people can come up uh, using their own local legends, uh, abandoned um, manuf manufactory, or uh, or a beast in the woods, or or anything, or or a mass mass murderer who is still inside of city. Uh, just came up i just came up with an idea to to make this reskin of obscure to do some uh hunting of uh, jack the ripper yeah it, 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 you could yeah. do that <laughs> you, you could definitely do that yeah it's, and it's it's the, a very adaptable system yeah the mechanics uh, uh mechanics besides the and uh, the inventory which is based on what you can find in the 90s. Uh, but yeah, you've, uh, you chose the 90s. Why? Because I chose the 90s because a smartphone with Google Maps would fuck up all of my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up in the 90s and, and I remember being a scared kid in the 90s when, when we saw something on TV and you couldn't just Google, okay, this isn't real, you know, this whole, uh, this whole modern technology of, of today, it, it just, you know, people, people watch too much shit all the time and it, it's, it's just not the same as, as back then when, you know, when the, when the Blair Witch Project came out, everybody thought it was, uh, it was a real thing, real found footage because they did such a great job marketing it and because people couldn't just look it up um, and and that's I think that's the main thing why I chose this and and also I just like the whole visual aspect of it I I, I love the 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 bad quality of the images and the, you know um, the way that I could do this these uh, this artwork and and hide these uh, monsters and shadows and stuff in almost in between the scan lines, you know. Um, yes. Yes, I was I was scared reading. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good to hear. This whole analog horror kind of I I put the with the glitching uh, TV screens and stuff that was uh, that's something that that's I really appreciate. So. I think that's why I, I, I chose the night as the as the setting. Yeah. Um I think that um the way the book is um created, like the perfect blend between what is real and what is not real and and uh, as a reader you're asking you, yourself uh, if what we are seeing is your your imagination or is there really a face inside of this shadow uh, there is i think one place uh, one f uh, one screen uh, where there is like a by made by red marker uh, a red circle around shadow that uh, uh, should that tells you that something is there and i've really looked up into it and i think there is something uh, there, but it's on the border of uh, uh, of my imagination of or my. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Damn it! 
This call this call this call build up for nothing. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's quite fun because when I when I got the book, have did you, have you seen the the physical version of the book or just the digital? Oh I do, I have it right here. Okay, because because when I when when I got it back from the printer, I uh, I realized that these images were even uh, harder to see in print because it told it told everything even more down on the screen. You have this back backlit screen, you know, so you can zoom in on stuff and 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 see what it actually is, or turn off the brightness on your screen, you know. But when you had the physical book, it was so much harder to see the the stuff. So it, yeah, I, I like the physical book so much more. Yeah, I think I think the '90s also was the time when where technology was available, but it was not a good quality. So exactly, you can you could have a much wider imagination uh, when you are uh, trying to find something in the footage you've recorded. Can you uh, do you have some uh, fun facts uh, about uh, making this game? About the process? Have you? Did you get some new knowledge? Uh, did you acquire some new knowledge uh, while uh, developing this game? Were there any obstacles that were hard to um, uh, to beat? Yeah, I can I can tell you a bit about the the making of the games because I I that was actually a really fun part of it as well. I went out and and, and bought a, an old typewriter from the start nineties. And an old, uh, an old uh, photocopier, a scanner. So a lot of the, a lot of the images and and the, the headings, the text is actually written on an old typewriter. I then scanned uh, into the computer where I, if you see some of these uh, headlines for the scenarios, this really uh, big warped text. I mean that uh, you know just rotating the paper while photocopying it. Nice. So, so, so this this whole uh, analog process was was really fun. Oh, a, a little fun fact. I don't think a lot of people noticed it, but you know, that's on one of the first pages in the book. There's a TV screen with just a lot of static in it, and uh, that actually contains a, a very clear image. You have to adjust your eyes. It's it's actually it's it's one of now I'm going to spoil it, but it's I don't know if if if, if you're familiar with these magic eye books from the nineties. It was a really big thing. They came out these where everything was just these sketchy images, and you had to like look through the image, and then a three D image would appear, and that okay. actually works. But you have to figure out how you see it yourself. Okay, I I think I'm gonna brute force it and try with every image. <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's great, uh, and and uh, the fact that this game is looks, this game looks like it is being played. Which is uh, which is very uh, very fitting for uh, uh, for your other works uh, and and your type of uh, type of w what were you you are working with. Mm, I personally love this uh, type of uh, type of design because it uh, it simply gives me an idea and the vibe of the game just by looking at it. Okay, we've teased something about future plans. Uh, right now uh, we have an October and uh, something is going on right now. Can you tell me more about the Obscure Files? Yes, I um, I just launched the pre-launch page on Kickstarter. Go in there and click notify. But this is uh, the Obscure Files, I call it. It official product, but with a lot of scenarios in it. But all of these scenarios are created by our community. And I already uh, received a few finished scenarios. And then we have um, in our Discord server, we have a great community in there with uh, there's a lot of people already working on creating their own legends and their own scenarios for this project. So it will be, um, hopefully it would be a nice printed physical scene just packed with fan-made content scenarios that you can use with Obscure. So it's it's very exciting and I love to, I love to follow uh, the, the other creators' uh, projects because a lot of them are sharing their works in in the Discord server. You know, sharing their work in progress images and the text, and we we um, exchange uh, uh, tips for for making it and improving it. So it's, I think it's going to be a, a, a really really cool project, um, and and it's so exciting to see that people actually want to to create stuff. Uh, but for this thing that that I created. 
it's a huge pat on the back for me. Um, because when I announced this, I, I wasn't sure if there was even going to be enough content to, to publish anything. So, so that's, uh, I'm very happy to see uh, how many people are, are, are making submissions for it. That's, that's great to hear. And also, uh, if you would like to join the, um, the Obscure Fires, this game jam, uh, it, uh, this video will be published, um, inside uh, during the October. So you will still have the chance, uh, hit up uh, Tommy in our, I try to uh, find his discord, uh, for example, in the description of this video and, and our social medias, and, and you will find some, uh, more obscure, uh, goodness. About the obscure goodness, do you have plan of uh, translating uh, the, this game to, to uh, more languages? Uh, do you have some uh, plans about it? I actually do. Um, it's fun that you bring it up now because I just uh, signed a few contracts. Um, I will have it. Uh, I have some people in Italy uh, working on uh, doing an Italian translation right now, and then I just signed. Uh, a contract with a Polish uh, publisher as well. So very, very soon, I hope it will come out in, in other languages. I'm also talking with uh, a publisher in Spain and Germany. So nice. Very good. It's, it's, it's so nice to see that that's all publishers actually wants to publish my shit. That's, <laughs> that, that's awesome. And, uh, and also for the people that, that that doesn't read English or just prefer it in their own language. It's, it's really nice that, you know, just to get it out to, to a, a broader audience. It does. That's great to hear up outside obscure. Uh, what are you, uh, working on right now? Well, yeah, Mark do and, and obscure files. Do you have some project that we, you would like to tease? Okay. I am, um, besides working right, right now, uh, Mark do is, is is taking up a lot of space for me because I need to finish this before the end of the year. I kind of promised that to, to my Vegas. So, 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 so that's my main project right now, but I, I have another, I hope it's going to be a big project in, in the works. I think the only place that I announced it is on my discord server. I have a, I have a separate server for it. I right now it's called mad puppets and it's like a. It's like a handcrafted uh, world where everything is, you know, puppets. So I'm sitting here at home, just building these articulated puppets that I want to make. I want to make like a cinematic stop motion trailer for it. And all the artwork in the book is photographs uh, of these puppets. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's a really fun process. And yeah, that will, that will be some official announcement at some point. Wow. Wow. Is it going to be something like, uh, from a Tim Burton story? It is, it's, of course it's, it's a bit inspired by Tim Burton, but my main inspiration, the reason I started it was after watching, uh, Phil Tibbet, he made this, uh, mad guy. Yeah. Completely, uh, batshit crazy movie. And so, so, so the, the main aesthetic will, will lean heavily upon his work. So I have my, my, my cabinet behind me is full of uh, these nightmarish puppets, but I can't show them to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, well, uh, just by hearing this, uh, like, uh, making a stop motion, stop motion inspired photos for, uh, for a RPG. I've never seen, uh, something like, like that before. You are, no, uh, me, me neither. You are Who's... a pioneer in, uh, uh, in this, um, uh, uh, best, be, uh, best luck uh, to you uh, with uh, with Mad Puppets uh, or whatever, whatever is going to be uh, called. I, I probably I, I always end up sticking with the with the working in the title. So <laughs> and so it, it has a, it has a nice as well. It has a it, it has a ring to it. it, it it's got it's got vibes. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was uh, Tommy Sonsonauer. We were uh, talking about his game Obscure, which is coming uh, to to some people who are making this uh, Polish version. Uh, so I hope that uh, my Polish uh, friends and my Polish viewers will 
I will be happy to hear about it. And yeah, I hope that your tummy is go- uh, going to be uh, a furniture in our uh, bar. And uh, and we will uh, hear from you pretty soon. Yeah, I hope to be back. With, maybe we can, should talk about Mad Puppets the next time. That will be great. So yeah, till the next time.